Hello, it's David Clark here from DVC Training, and I'm going to do a short video about what's new in the very first release of EDIUS 9. Firstly, don't expect a huge raft of new features in the very first release of EDIUS 9, with EDIUS 9 Grass Valley are doing exactly what they did with EDIUS 8. In other words, they're going to produce an update, and then they're going to produce regular updates every couple of months, adding in new features. And then in about two years' time, they'll produce EDIUS 10. So over the life of EDIUS 8, we had a whole lot of new features added, which included things like better color correction, motion tracking, revamping the interface, supporting a lot of new formats, as well as having to deal with things like the fact that QuickTime for Windows was suddenly not supposed to be a good thing, so they had to reprogram the program not to use that. They're going to do the same with EDIUS 9, and in the first release, they've got a bunch of new features, the biggest of which is the support for HDR color spaces. But there will be more coming on over the next couple of years. We haven't yet got a list of things that will be added, and of course, even if they do produce a list, it might change because of other things going on. So right now, I'm just going to show you what we've got in the very first release of EDIUS 9 in November of 2017. So the main thing, like I said, is support for HDR color spaces and output. So I'll go into that in a second. We've also got support for 10-bit MP4 files, which is nice. It means you can do better quality MP4 files. They've done a few little tweaks on the interface, some things that people have been asking for to make it nicer to use. They've added support in the workgroup version for the ability to output a 50 or 60p UHD project to a monitor using certain Blackmagic and Arja cards, and they've also added support for some new formats. There's also a couple of tweaks inside of Mink. So I'll go through all of that over the course of these videos. First of all, let's have a look at HDR. So what is HDR? Well, I could spend ages discussing all the differences with HDR and color spaces and stuff like that. I'm going to try and keep it simple. HDR isn't really to do with how you film stuff. HDR basically means you can get a brighter image and you can have more color information in it and you can see more of the differences between the bright bits and the dark bits. So it's basically a higher range of colors and a nicer looking image. So for example, this picture that I'm looking at here, this new EDIUS logo, this is a 24-bit still image. So it's got a huge amount of color information in there. You've got very bright bits and very dark bits. Now you take that and you try and shove it out to a DVD or out to a regular television, and a lot of that information gets lost. So for example, I know that looking at this image today, the bright areas on this butterfly here, yeah, there is some detail in there, bung that out to a regular TV through a video card, and that gets lost. HDR basically means you'll see more of this, more details around the bright areas here and here, and more details in the dark areas than you would on a regular television. Television. Now this image is not an HDR image, it's basically a bitmap, which has been drawn presumably in Photoshop or something like that. And it's the same with cameras, you know, you can film on a camera in a vlog mode or in something like a Blackmagic Cinema camera, and there's a huge amount of dynamic range in there, so more information in the whites and more information in the blacks, and you lose a lot of that by the time you get out to a regular television. Now the fact there's more in the first place means you can get a better result at the end of it, but you're still losing it. Well, if you go out to an HDR file or an HDR TV, you'll have more of it in there. So you basically get a better quality image. So it's all about output. It's not really about input. So how do you set that up inside of EDIUS? Well, I'm going to go into EDIUS 9. Now, if you've been using EDIUS 8, you'll notice everything's immediately familiar. They are tweaking the interface slightly, but it's essentially going to stay the same, just with a few small changes. You can see here I'm using the Pro version. Everything I'm going to show you in this video is the same between the Pro and the Workgroup version. I'm going to start up a new project, and I'm going to go and choose some kind of preset. And if I click on the Customize button, so you can see all the settings all this lot should be pretty much familiar to you if you've been using EDIUS 8 but not this one here color space you can see here you've now got an option to choose between different color spaces now 601 that's really standard definition 709 is typically what you do for high definition these look practically the same these are the new ones BT 2020 this is the color space you work in for HDR and you'll notice there's three variations. So there's just one that says BT2020, and there's one that says HLG, and one that says PQ. These are the two main formats of HDR images. So obviously you're gonna produce a file at the end, which is an HDR image, and then you're gonna take it and try and play it on something. Now whatever you play it on needs to know it's an HDR image so it can adjust the picture on the TV accordingly. And there's two main standards, HLG, or Hybrid Log Gamma, and PQ. 
PQ is a format which is an open source format just about anybody can use, very, very commonly used. People like Netflix and Amazon, and they'll be doing their HDR using a PQ file. HLG is a format that's been developed between the BBC and a Japanese broadcasting company, and it just does HDR in a different way. It's been developed primarily to make it easy for broadcasters to broadcast stuff. I could go into the differences between these two, but I'm not going to. Basically, these are the two main standards. If you're going to produce something for somebody in HLG, you'll choose that. If they say they want PQ, you'll choose that. There are other formats of HDR. So Dolby have a, a specific format of HDR, which gets a bit more complicated than these two. And Edius doesn't do that at the moment. That format's probably going to be end up using mainly by digital cinemas, but these are the main ones that you're going to use. Now, by choosing one of these, you then decide what's going to happen on the timeline and what kind of file is going to be output. So if I choose HLG, I'll produce an HLG file at the end of it. Of course, you can change it. This is part of the project settings. You can change it whenever you feel like. Of course, if I'm going to be starting to use big color spaces and a lot more information, it doesn't make sense to work in 8-bit, which chucks out a lot of information. So I'm going to work in... 10 bit and then I'm going to go OK and bosh I'm into EDIUS 9. You can see here it looks pretty similar to the way EDIUS 8 looked. There are a few changes I'll talk about that in a separate section. Now I want to do some HDR editing so I'm just going to go off and grab some clips like say that wallpaper throw it onto the timeline. I've got another clip here this was one of my first vlog clips I ever did on the GH4 so it's done in a vlog mode. And I've got a whole tutorial about that if you want to know about the advantage of that kind of thing. Throw them on the timeline, basically Edius just uses them. So for example, this one here, I'll just take the primary color corrector, throw it on there, open it up. I'm going to say, yep, this is a Panasonic Vlog clip. Bosh, there it is, it's actually set it up so it looks rather nice. I can still tweak it using all the tools that I've got here. You'll notice it's saying in the primary color corrector, I'm converting it from the Panasonic Vlog format that it's in in the first place to the project color space. So at the moment, this is now setting it up so I'll produce an HDR version, which looks like that and work nicely on an HDR screen. If I was to go back to the project settings and just change that color space again, now you notice it does look different, but the primary color corrector is now converting it from Panasonic Vlog format to 709. So as long as you put a primary color corrector on there, it'll convert it from whatever the original color space is to match HDR or 799 or whatever. You do notice you get a different look. So that was quite a lot brighter on the display I've got here than it was when the project was set to HLG. That's because I'm looking at this on a regular computer screen. It's not an HDR computer screen. Like I said, HDR is to do with output. So if I was to change this to HDR again, it looks flatter here, but actually it'll be looking pretty good on the HDR TV. It'll look better on the HDR TV than it did when it was set to 799. But the display here changes. So if you haven't got an HDR TV and you haven't got a way of putting a picture out from EDIUS to an HDR TV, looking and playing with HDR and EDIUS is going to be a little bit like doing a surround sound edit using stereo speakers. It might not make too much sense. It makes a lot more sense when you can see the results on an HDR TV. So that brings in a second thing. Okay, how do you see the results on an HDR TV? EDIUS will support HDR out of devices that do this. So most commonly people use Blackmagic devices with EDIUS and EDIUS will put HDR out through a Blackmagic device. Now when I was showing off EDIUS at IBC recently, we were watching HDR and we were watching it out of an Arja card that supported HDR. It'll also work with some Blackmagic cards. In this system, I've got a Blackmagic Intensity Pro. This is the old Intensity Pro, not even the 4K version. And I can tell you when you change to HDR on EDIUS, nothing happens because the old Intensity Pro does not do HDR. But if you get the right card, you'll be able to output HDR and look at it at HDR on your screen. EDIUS probably won't automatically switch your screen to show an HDR picture. You'll probably have to go into the menu and tell it it's getting an HLG or a PQ signal because it doesn't do that automatically on the timeline. But what it does do is when you produce a final file, it'll shove that information into the file. So then if you take that file off and pop it onto a screen, the screen will automatically switch into the right HDR mode. So if I was to output this, what would I do? Well, I'd just come up to file and then output and print file. And I'd choose a format to make up this video on the timeline. So obviously got lots of different formats here. The ones we think you're probably going to use the most for doing HDR output are H.264, 
and XAVC. H.264 is the way you'd make an MP4 file. So you just click on that, go export, give it a name, obviously set your settings up, and then you just export it. Now you might notice in these settings I haven't got anything for color space. What I do have on the MP4 export is I have the option to do 10-bit MPEG-4, so better quality MPEG-4s than I did before. But I don't have a setting there for color space. Literally, I would just come in here, click save, wait for it to encode it, and then have a look at the result. And there we are, I've got my file made up. If I have a look at the properties of that clip, you notice that that file has actually got color space set to HLG. So although there wasn't a setting for it in the export dialog box, it actually automatically set it to the same as the project. So literally by setting that project up in the first place, now you're telling Edius what to do with everything afterwards. So there's another thing you'll notice, there is a color space setting in the clip. So if I go to the properties of any clip, I can set the color space up, and from here I can come in and say, right, well this should be 709 or this should be whatever. Obviously there's a little asterisk next to the one that it thinks it is. If you've got a camera that films in HDR, then Edia should see that information immediately. So for example, I've got a couple of clips here that uh, actually were filmed at the show on a new Sony camera, and I'll go to the properties of that clip, and you'll notice that one knows it was already filmed in HLG. So as soon as I shove that clip onto the timeline, Edia quite obviously matches the way my project's set. If I put the primary color corrector on there, and then say change the project settings, now you notice there was a change in the look of the image up here, and that's because the primary color corrector has already changed it automatically from HDR to 709. If I hadn't done that, then the clip itself would have still remained a bit dull when it goes into 709, and that would look a bit dull on the 709 output, whereas it looks fine on an HDR output. So, so Edius will notice if there's what they call HDR metadata, that's information you know, basically telling you it's an HDR clip. It'll notice if that's in the clip in the first place, and it'll put it into the final file when you actually make a clip. If I go back to the print to file dialog, not all of these options can include HDR metadata. Now we reckon you'll probably use MP4 files for an awful lot of exports. You, know, you can take an MP4 file made in EDIUS, pop it into the USB port on an HDR TV, and you should be able to just play it and it'll notice it straight away and use the right color space on the television. So MP4 files, that's probably very commonly used. If you're going to go to another editing program, so you're going to produce something and want to give it to somebody in a better quality, probably the one you're likely to use is this one, XAVC. So there's two variations of XAVC. XAVC-S is a bit like an MP4 file. XAVC itself is a much bigger sort of iframe format file, and that is also a standard format, so most other programs should be able to understand it. So we reckon that would probably be one that you'll choose to actually export it out of EDIUS and go off to other programs because it's a nice high quality format and you don't lose too much, which of course you lose a bit if you go to an MP4 file. But it does save the information in other files. So if you go to QuickTime and say produce a Grass Valley file, then that'll have HDR metadata in it as well. It's just, is the application you're going to going to be able to read Grass Valley HQ files? Well, if it's EDIUS, it will. If it's something else, it probably won't. It won't put HDR information into an AVI file, and that's not Grass Valley's fault. It's the fact that AVI files just don't let you stuff a lot of information into them, which is something that they've been rubbish at for ages. Any of these formats that can have HDR metadata, EDIUS will shove it into the file automatically. Ones that can't, it doesn't. The other question you've got about HDR is probably, okay, I'm gonna produce an HDR edit because I've got some fancy cameras and I want the best quality possible. But I've also got to produce an SDR edit, a standard 709 color space edit for all the people I know that don't have an HDR TV, which is probably going to be most of them at the moment. What do you do about that? You're going to have to probably grade the thing twice. If I was just to bring a clip in like this, which is HDR, put it onto the timeline and then put it out at HDR without doing anything to it, then you won't have to fiddle because you'll just swap the project settings over and it'll adjust it accordingly. But when you come to take a clip and then do something to it, then the results are going to be different in HDR color space as opposed to 709 color space. But let's just put this project back to HDR. I am now going to go through and I'm going to tweak this image a bit so I can produce something that looks like I want it to. Quite happy with that result. Off I go, I make an HDR file and I give it to somebody and they can watch it. Now I want to make a 709 file, so what can I do? Well, obviously you go to the project settings, 
and you just choose 709 so that's the high definition color space and immediately I'm getting an image that's a bit blown out you know these things are just a bit too bright and it's not working properly if I go to the primary color corrector you'll notice it's automatically changing it for me but these adjustments that I made you know when I brighten the image up a bit to make it look nicer on the HDR I've brightened it up too much for standard resolution, so I'm going to have to do the grading again. So I'm just going to pull down the highlights a bit and bring up the gamma and do whatever I feel like. But now I've just had to do the grading twice. And you're probably going to have to do that for every timeline where you want to produce two edits. And it makes sense because if you're going to adjust something to get the best out of the bright areas and the best out of the dark areas, and you're looking at it in a high dynamic range where you've got a lot more information in those brights and darks, that's not going to work for something when you switch it to a lower color thing, you know, a standard range. So you're going to have to do the job twice or one of them is going to be a fudge. So if you're not changing the clips, not a problem. But if you start to grade the stuff and to be honest, if you're fiddling around with high dynamic range and you're buying expensive cameras to do that, you're probably going to want to fiddle with everything to try and make the best out of it. Then if you're going to do that, you're probably going to have to do the grade twice. The obvious thing to do would be duplicate a sequence and I'll have one sequence which is graded in HDR and I'll do the other sequence and grade that in 709. But I'll basically have to do the job twice. So I think Adius has got a nice simple HDR workflow. There's still some things they need to add like HDR scopes for example, which we haven't got yet. But I've got a nice simple workflow of setting the project, then after that everything HDR and it produces an HDR file. And they've got nice simple output files for it. Now, of course, that's great if you are working in HDR. If you're not working in HDR, you're going to say, well, what else does EDS9 do for me? So let's have a look at some of the other changes. 